unbelievable, the most earth-shattering things that Jesus ever said. It was the one thing that separated Jesus from all other good teachers or rabbis or sages that had lived in the land up until that moment. And even today, it is the defining statements, sayings, teachings, and revelation that God has given through Jesus himself to us to tell us what to do, how to live, and what to be that defines and separates Christianity from any other religion in the world. Now, other people could say and claim that they may be born again or whatever, and that they may have some kind of spiritual experience. But the one thing that defined a person who followed Jesus was what Jesus said to do. Because Jesus lived what he said, he said what he meant, and he did what he said. And in going up onto a mountaintop, he declared something new. He declared something that was going to fulfill, literally, the law, but also that would become a defining moment in the reality of not just Judaism, but the reality of this faith that was going to come and we would call Christianity that would become a religion, but also would become more than that. It would become a relationship with God the Father. It would become something more that we did not know and didn't understand. But one thing that was very clear was that all those who heard what Jesus said were shocked to their core. They were surprised and amazed that Jesus could state, that Jesus could say, and Jesus could do those things that he listed on and in the Sermon on the Mount. When we've been taking this verse by verse, we've seen how he blessed the people, how he starts with a blessing upon them, the brechas, the blessings, the beatitudes, as it were, that people have called it and labeled it. And a lot of times when people look at the Sermon on the Mount, they always make it into something that's a high idea, that it's this unattainable goal, that it's the laws of the kingdom, that no, you can't live them, but by grace you can be forgiven. So you just try to be a good person, or you try to do the right thing. But Jesus didn't say that, because you see, in the Sermon on the Mount, he starts with blessing the people, but as he goes on, at the end of the sermon, he makes some interesting statements. He directly speaks to all the people, as they say in verse 28 and 29, and it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Why? Because you look up a couple verses and it's very interesting, this statement that we keep reiterating over and over and over again. Because people will tell you all the time that Jesus didn't mean what he said, that he wasn't being that blunt, he wasn't being that real. He was using some Jewish analogy, some Jewish story, because it was common of the traditions of the sages and the rabbis to tell a story. But Jesus says what? Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, wait a minute, does them? Doesn't doing them mean doing them? Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, from verse 24, I will liken unto him as a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it is founded upon a rock. Wow! So Jesus is saying, if you do these things, you're a wise man. Oh, well, that sounds good. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. That's exciting. I can be thrilled with the idea that if I do them, then guess what? But what if you don't do them? And then Jesus says, everyone that hears, hears these sayings of mine and does them not. You do it or you don't. What happens to the man who doesn't do them? He would be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. You know, it's interesting too, is that we backtrack again. We keep going backwards from the end of the Sermon on the Mount. We see somewhere in verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, enters into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Because many will say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. In other words, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus starts off with blessing the people for what their kingdom is, or what they will receive, for what they are. 
But then he takes you one step farther. He says, this is what I say unto you. And all through the sermon you're going to hear that. You have heard it said, or you have seen it written, or the law says, or your religion says. But he's going to tell you directly in every step of the way in this sermon, in this teaching, in these, as Jesus calls it for himself, sayings of mine. I say unto you. And that's what Jesus said. And that's why we keep looking at it step by step. Looking at, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And now we look at verse 15, where it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. We looked at last time what light is and how you could be some type of light. But what light are you? But now we're looking at a candle. Do you realize that? Jesus is saying very bluntly, neither, from being the light of the world and being a city on a hill, neither do men light a candle and then put it under a bushel. Well, why? Because if you're a candle and you are bright light and you're shining, but you also have the fire of God in you, then you are going to burn those that are bushes because we're all plantings of the Lord. So where do you put the light that you are? where it's meant to be you put it in a candlestick holder because why because the candle burns out the candle burns down the candle can burn all those things around it so you don't stick it where there's combustible material do you do you realize that you are the combustible material you cause some things to happen just by your very presence being there that you can't change the fact that you're alive you can't change the fact that you're a candle of god that you have within you burning the Holy Spirit that shines forth from your life, from the circumstances of your life, from everything that's in you that's shining outward to all the world around you, that when you are put in your proper place, when you are designed with a specific action in mind, you are caused to be a bright light, that if you are in a candle holder, then you are put by that candle holder into a place where... Where does it say that you should be put? So that it gives light unto all them that are in the house. You are called, you are chosen, you are designed as that candle to be placed in your holder and then set in a place to shine the light into the darkness, to cause there to be visibility, to cause there to be the ability to walk through the world or the house without stumbling over something. What happens in your house when the lights are out? What happens when things are dark and you can't see? Do you flip on the light switch? Do you grab a, a flashlight? Do you strike a match? The same is true about a candle. Because it's designed for a specific purpose. It is placed in a specific area to do a specific function, to cause light. And that's what you are. Where you are today, Jesus says, you are that candle. You are the person you are the one that I have put you where you are, as you are, in a holder, the palms of my hand, as I hold you, as you are shining my light into the darkness of the world around you. Your family situation may be you're the only one that's saved. You're the only one that knows God. You're the only one that's walking with God. And whether you say a word or whether you don't, whether you do what God says or don't, guess what? You're still a light. But God wants you to be functioning properly in the right place and setting. So he puts you in a candle holder, but then he puts you in what? Have you read it? Did you look at it? Did you think about it? Did you think about these words? Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. So are you out there in the wilderness, shining your light in a place where God didn't put you? Are you out there trying to declare things that God never told you to do? Are you trying to burn down? somebody's life with your words your actions the very fact that you're there are you causing fires to be lit because you're a candle when god wants you to be a light you see you don't go out to start a fire you go out to be a light and so god says i put on a candlestick i put a candlestick in what a candle holder so that you would be held there to give light not there to cause fright. 
by a raging inferno of your own determination. It gives light unto all that are in the house. Did you notice what it says? It gives light, not fire. It gives light, not to be the warmth. You are called in this, very simply, to be the light that God intended you to be. That the light shineth in the darkness, and they come and are attracted to it, because when you are that light, you will draw moths. You will draw the enemy. You will draw mosquitoes. You will draw gnats. You will draw all kinds of weird things coming at you. But at the same time, you will shine light where you will allow people to see the light, to walk in the light thereof, and to find their way. Because if you enter into the darkness without a light, you stumble and fall. But if you walk with the light, then you can see where your footsteps are put. You can determine whether there's something in your way. You can shine forth that life that you are because your life is the light and your light is a candle not in the wind but in the holder that God intended it to be covering by his own hands holding by the palms of his hand lit by his own actions and causing those around you to know what is the light of the world because you have become likened unto Jesus and Jesus wants you to be just perfect in where he's placed you as you are. So don't go out of your place, but be in your house. Be in the place God has put you, right there in your house, in the house of God, in the house that he's created your life to be. Be that light. Do what Jesus said, because if you don't, you'll be blown out. If you don't, when the storms come and the winds blow and the storms beat down upon you and the rain falls, your light may be snuffed. And God forbid that it should happen. But God promises that if, think about that, if you do what he says, if you are faithful to what Jesus is saying to you, you are being a light, not a fire. You are being a candle, not a flame starter, but that you are staying in the place that God has put you, a candlestick, then guess what you are? You are a light to all those that are in darkness. You have become the light of the world. So today, in examining this devotional, in looking at what Jesus said, in knowing that Jesus is being literal, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to be a candle shining your light to all men that are in the house, to all that are in the house, to everyone? Notice it says that all that are in the house. What house? Ask God about it. He'll show you. Could it be your own house of your own life? Ask God to show you. Could it be the house that you're living in? Ask God to show you. Could it be the house of God? Ask God to show you. Because you see, when he's literal, it can be every house that you're in. You're the light. When you visit a neighbor in that house, you are the light. When you go someplace else, you are that light. But you must be in the holder, the candlestick, that you were intended to be. And did you know that the lampstand is Jesus walking in the midst thereof in the book of Revelation? So wherever you go, if you're in that lampstand, guess what? Jesus walks in the midst of it. So in your heart, in the midst of your life, in who you are today, I pray and God would ask you to do exactly, deliberately, consciously, physically what Jesus said to do. What Jesus said you are. What Jesus said you're becoming. I pray today you may be and do what Jesus said.